Welcome to Nugget 177 with Steve Groman, and we are continuing our series with our friend David Clifford, a machinist with the Mount Washington Cog Railway. Mount Washington at 6,288 feet in the Presidential Range is the highest mountain in the northeastern United States. New Hampshire settler Darby Field made the first ascent of the mountain from a southerly approach in the Pinkham Notch. Field was guided partly by a few Indians and primitive equipment. We are talking with David, who is a machinist for the Mount Washington Cog Railway, and he is a part of this extremely historical, iconic company, and he works on these cogs, and you are part of the reason that the tourists can have such a wonderful time year-round going up on this cog railway to the top of Mount Washington. I like to think so. It's a, a combined effort, myself and a lot of other people I bet who work so. really it's hard. It's a team effort. These guys and girls work really, really hard to make this not only a fun experience, but a safe experience at the same time. Well, I know in the first two nuggets in this series, we've talked specifically about your job and about the railway in different ways. But you toured us around and we went through your machine shop and mm-hmm. we've looked at the different locomotives. Yes. You took us outside and there's this uh, rail switching yard. You want to tell us a little bit about that as we walk through that and then went into where the actual coaches are you we have two sets of rails that come into the shop area we have the main line and a side line that's so that we can have multiple locomotives down there at the same time some of them are required to be parked for service we have to have the ability to switch the track from one to the other so they came up with we call it the transfer and basically it's a linear track moving device they designed and built all this here on site again like i said in your earlier nugget you can't just go and buy one of these off the shelf. They came up with the design. It's powered by a relatively small four-stroke engine. It uses hydraulics and gears and it moves the railway which you can park a locomotive on or a coach and shift it from one track to the other and as you can see in your pictures it accesses multiple bays in the old buildings. The building on the right is called the coach works or the uh, car shop. You allowed us to walk through there and walk through some of these coaches that have been refurbished. How many bays are there? Like eight or ten. There's several bays. They're on both sides of the track. They're wanna... all needed? Oh, yeah. If we park all of our locomotives inside, we'd use every Well, that's what I, my question. My next question yeah. was, how many locomotives do you all have and how at many time run we, at any one given time? Right now, we're, I believe we have eight. And we're in the we are going to be building an, an additional one, hopefully very soon. I don't know how many coaches we have. We have several coaches. Coaches come and go at such a rapid rate, and I really don't do a whole lot with the coaches. As you can see from your photos, we are in the process of building a brand new coach, which I did have the pleasure of taking part in, in manufacturing, doing secondary operations primarily to a lot of the components that are utilized in the building of the trucks and the brake assemblies and all of this uh, whole process. It's really quite fascinating. Was it on that one, that uh, on the coach, the, the, the massive, massive brake? Yeah, they have really massive braking systems. Three discs, massive discs with uh, calipers, all pneumatically operated. And they have what's called a Sprag clutch, which is essentially a one-way clutch that's also operated under pressure. You had these two coaches that you showed us and we were able to walk through and they're just yes. the torches because of the lower capacity you're not using them. They have more coaches than are they running on the mountain at any one time. I believe they run up to four trains. We call them quads. They run four trains at a time. So each one of them would have a coach. We have more than four coaches so they have to put them somewhere. And they're beautiful. You can see by the woodwork. The craftsmanship just, that goes yeah, into yeah. the coaches they're, is really pretty, beautiful. pretty remarkable. Um, we have Rob Robbo. I call him Robbo. His name's Rob. Great woodworking uh specialist. He's a carpenter uh, with a tremendous amount of skill. And he he not only constructs them, but he does a lot of the finer details on his own. He comes up with the designs for the finials and such that go into these things. He's like, you know, I think we'll do this on this coach. And it makes the coaches unique, unique in their in own way. way. Each coach yeah, is, yeah. has its own uh, uniqueness. About that personality, that living, breathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're customized, and it's like a piece yeah. of art for him. It and is. The woodwork and all that's his he's, artwork. He's truly and, an and artist. even though yours is a, yeah. is a piece of steel, it's still artwork for you. As we it talked is. about, like you said in the first nugget, yeah, about being a sculptor. And steel. Yeah. Yes, and then I know that we went outside and saw a couple of the really old ones. The really old trains out back in the, yeah, in the, in the graveyard, in so the to graveyard. speak. Yeah, you took us back into yeah. what we'll call the graveyard. And One of them back there there's been some talk about possibly reviving and there's no, really no reason why it couldn't be. That would of be course, nice. it would require a complete 
right. rework. And I would be very excited if that were to happen oh, because I would be really integral in, in the development of that. And then um, you showed us that that really ugly thing. They used it for a couple of seasons trying to clear the snow. Because off that's the important. Can you talk a little bit about the snow? Because we talk about the weather and that you are an yeah, all well, season operation. We are now. We are all seasons um, running part way up in the winter. We want to have the tracks cleared as soon as possible in the spring. This was an attempt, this snow thrower. It's jet engine powered. It's it, literally it was, a jet engine. It's literally a jet thing. engine. I wasn't I wasn't working here when they used it. I think it's the best I know the, in the back. That thing yeah, the, the, the guy who ran it loved it. He thought it was the coolest thing on the planet. I can tell you that. You could hear him coming. Um, yeah, they thought it sounded like Manchester Airport when they fired that thing up. <laughs> it was short-lived, um, one or two seasons, uh, because just because of sheer fuel consumption. So there's some interesting things in, and the, also, in the backyard. There. Yes, there's some very interesting things out there. Some of the one of the oldest and one of the oldest engines is back there. The oldest engine is Pepper Sass, which they have on static display at the entrance uh, to the Cog Railway, and that's a vertical boiler. It's a different style. These are all horizontal boilers, but the one out front is a vertical boiler. After we were in the, uh, we'll say the old building, mm -hmm. there's a brand new construction. This is what's most exciting because you know I've only been working at the Cog. I've got 35 years of machining experience, but I've only been working at the Cog for a year and a half. So I'm still learning a lot of the ropes, and it's utterly fascinating. The beauty of it is I came in at just the right time. Wayne Presby, the owner, has invested heavily in the future of this company by building a 35,000 square foot maintenance facility. It's brand new, state-of-the-art state nice. building. It's beautiful. The floors are beautifully flat. I don't know if you have any pictures of the old floor. Barry, you could throw <laughs> one of them in here. Our old floor in the old building was made out of three or four different materials. We had bricks and concrete and macadam and wood. Here we have all one layer of highly reinforced concrete. We will be able to... Um, well, after 150 years, you might think about getting a new building, right? We yeah. appreciate him investing in Oh, goodness, this, yes. In this bit of Americana. Yeah, this man sure. has a real vision for the future of the Mount Washington. He wants this to continue for another 150 years. That would be tremendous. We do, too. And hopefully, uh, you know, the remainder of my uh, employment there, uh, which I'm hoping is till I retire, I'll be able to keep the steam engines and uh, help with whatever they need me to do with the diesels to keep this thing operating and in good condition. For the you also duration. had one of those uh, ingenuity ideas on the snow removal. Thing. Yeah, like we were saying before, snow removal is crucial because we want to clear the mountain of the snow as early in the season as possible. Primarily because there's track maintenance that needs to be done and we have to be able to access the hill. The earlier we can start our season, the earlier people get to enjoy the Cog Railway to its fullest. Part of that is we have a snow thrower mounted to the front of a, a locomotive. We made some interesting progress with the development of snow removal techniques. The front of a, whether it's a blade, it doesn't really clear the very bottom. It doesn't touch the tracks. So right. To speak. Yeah. You couldn't, you so wouldn't want to scrape the tracks. The engineering department and I both combined effort came up with a design and a build on uh, these little snow scrapers that they literally are spring loaded scrapers that rub the track. There's a blade in the front and a rubber base to it. So it doesn't damage the track. And uh, it's worked wonderfully with clearing the snow off the tracks themselves to make it safe for the locomotive to progress up the track after the snow thrower goes up. And then there's the snow removal of, of the cog. Yeah, we're... The chain, we'll call it. Yeah, you can you call, call it. It's a linear chain. Yeah. And that's that's something that we're working on right now. We've experimented with several different methods to effectively clear snow out of the cog. It's a contained area, so it's difficult. You don't want ice and snow build up in there because right. that leads to other problems. Like the cog can't get in there and do its job. Yeah, it can get in there, but it smashes it down and <laughs> turns it into ice and things get kind of ugly. It's really so nasty ice. We're we're working on methods of effectively removing that. In the past, quite honestly, they'd send guys up there with shovels and brooms. Wow. And that's we thought not exactly cost effective. Our driveway was tough. <laughs> oh, yeah. You ain't seen nothing until you go up the, the cog. Well, our driveway is sort of a monumental. It is. With the brand new building, we're also upgrading the equipment in the machine shop so that we're literally stepping into the 21st century with our machining capabilities at the COG. Because and I bet you're excited about that. As a machinist, you have certainly seen oh, yeah. big changes in the equipment that you've used over the... A lot of the equipment that I'm using now, we're talking World War II vintage equipment. And he just went back and forth. You know, he moves it, drills a hole. Moves it, drills a hole. That's it. But he didn't have to stand here and crank it. And, and try to hit the number, it goes right to where it's supposed to go. 
older than you. Older than me. Uh, older, yeah, older than me and most people I know. <laughs> well, yes, and it's, it's a lot of World War II. It's very difficult. We don't have World War II men. And I, no, we don't. And, and uh, God bless them. But uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to do some of the machining processes with precision and accuracy that this place has never seen before with rapidity. We'll be able to do it quickly and efficiently. All right. Well, we want to thank you so much for coming over and spending some time. And we appreciate you taking us on such a fabulous tour. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice tour. Was... My pleasure. It's, it's wonderful having you come out. And I'm glad you're able to do this. And, and I hope your listeners or viewers are able to come out and visit the Cog Railway yeah, in, in Bretton Woods, well, sure. New Hampshire. New Hampshire is definitely a state that needs to be on everyone's bucket list. I it agree. If you ride the Cog gorgeous. Railway up, you will have done something that only can be done at one place in the eastern half of this country. That's right. And if you've listened to any of these nuggets and you do go, stop by the maintenance shed and ask, <laughs> see, Say hi to and David. meet David. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not right in the middle of something, maybe I can show you around a little bit. Sure. All right. Well, thank All you. Right. Thank you. We hope these nuggets are helping you, your family, and your friends. And again, if you can help us on a financial basis, we certainly appreciate that. We spend a lot of time doing these nuggets to hopefully spread the truth of God's creation. And we appreciate your help, your support, and your prayers. Thank you.